everything I loved and hated about P&O's brand new cruise ship, Aria. Now, before we get started, let's uh, crack up crack open a can because we're going to be spilling some tea. Anyway guys, welcome back to a brand new video. If you've not seen me before, my name is Danny Dalamore and if you like this type of content, make sure you smash that like button and if you haven't clicked subscribe, hit that subscribe button and let's get into everything I loved and hated about P&O's brand new cruise ship, Oh, yeah. So we're gonna do five pros and five cons in this video. Now last time I did a video like this, some of you guys came for me because they said the video was very, very negative. Now let me tell you, right, it wasn't negative, it's just I put the five cons at the start and then we ended with the pros because I thought if I hit you with the hard truths and then I end on a positive, that's great. But it seems like a lot of people didn't finish the video and just watched the five cons and then were like, oh this video is so negative. So this time with feedback back on board, we're going to do one pro, one con, one pro, one con. And the first pro for P&O's Arvia, hang on, let's see if I can find the pros of the ship. <laughs> no, but one of the pros of P&O's Arvia has to be the new facilities. For anyone that doesn't know, Iona and Arvia are sister ships. They were built in the same shipyard a few years apart and Arvia has a few additions. One of the things that I really like in the new edition is that they now have an escape room. I wouldn't really, so I experienced the escape room, I wouldn't really say it's like your traditional escape room of what you would have done on land or elsewhere. It's more of an interactive escape room of where there's someone in the room with you, kind of guiding you through. It's not the type of escape room where you just get locked in the door seal and it's like, haha, loser. It's not like that escape room. Pretty much, it's, it's it's more of like, honestly, the best way I can explain it is it's imagine like a Disney were gonna create an escape room. This is what it would be like on Arvia. It's very, it's very child friendly. We really, really enjoyed it. It lasted about an hour, an hour and 15 sort of thing. And it was really, really good. It, it was pricey though. It was about 20 pound per head, uh, 10 pound for Stevie with him being a child. So it was like 30 quid experience. If you're a family of four, that's gonna add up. But it was definitely worth doing once on the cruise. I wouldn't do it more than once. <sighs> you could say there's a pro and a con to this experience. The acting in the experience is some of the worst acting I've ever seen. <laughs> It's really, really bad. It's really bad. It's like, I can't, like, it was so funny it was that bad. And we all couldn't stop laughing. We were all just like, oh my God, where did they find these actors? It was atrocious. But do you know what? As an experience, at least we can laugh and, and make, you know, it, it was funny. It was funny. If you've done it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, Stevie enjoyed it. It was good. Another thing that I really like about the new facilities is the fact that they've got the Crazy Golf. The Crazy Golf is really good. It's open from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. on the days of, of well, most days of the cruise. And to be honest, right, you would think because it's Crazy Golf and you think it's a family-friendly thing, everyone can take part, it's completely free, you would expect it to be busy all day. But actually on our cruise, and I must say this is our cruise, I couldn't tell you about like obviously other cruises, you know, when, when you go on Arvia, but it was quiet for us. Sailing. So we were on an early sailing though. We were maybe two voyages in since the maiden. So maybe that's why it was quiet. Maybe people were still getting to grips with it. But um, but yeah, we really enjoyed it. Another thing that I really enjoyed is that in the keys, you've got the row section, which is a new part of Arvia. It wasn't in the original uh, on Iona. So that was really good. And then you've also got the high ropes. Now, to be honest, I didn't do the high ropes. And the reason being is because I'm terrified of heights. You can't, you will not see me on there. But I have other friends that did it and they said it was amazing. So yeah, big pro for me. Loved the facilities, the newer facilities on Arvia. Now we have the first con. To be honest, a lot of people are gonna be fully aware of this con because it's highly talked about on all the forums. It's probably the most asked question I get in regards to Arvia and this is the sunbed situation. This could this could fit two of the cons. But when I got on the cruise, we got to quite a bit from a lot of crew but then also a lot of passengers on board that there was a lot of people that would go down first thing in the morning and take all, all the sunbeds and there wouldn't be any sunbeds for other guests. Now I went on this with my mind wide open. I'm not really someone that goes out and sunbathes myself so it didn't really bother me until I witnessed it firsthand of what I was seeing on the cruise and I kid you not there was one day it was one of the it was one of the first sea days and me and Stevie went on to the back of the ship on deck eight where you've got the pool and we saw a family come down in reserve 
They literally reserve about maybe six sunbeds. There was four of them and they reserved six sunbeds. And I just kind of like watched it because I thought it was really interesting just to see, right, this is interesting. And then for maybe about two or three hours, I then went in the, um, the clubhouse, which is right next to the bar, sat in there, watched a bit of entertainment, got our, our breakfast. Stevie sat, because Stevie went in the jacuzzi at the back, he sat there for hours just drinking, sitting, because I was in the clubhouse, in and out, in and out, editing. They must have came down to them some beds, I would honestly say around about 1 p.m. So they reserved them some beds from about 7 a.m. till 1 p.m. before they even came to the sun beds. Let me know in the comments what your experience is. Are you a sunbed hogger? <laughs> We're actually gonna go to a pro, because this is a really, really big pro. The crew. The crew on board PO cruise ships, first of all. Let's in fact actually let's not just say PO cruise ships. Let's go across the board. The things the crew have had to go through over the last three to four years, as I'm recording this is 2023, so we're still at the other end of the pandemic. The things the crew have had to go through over the last three to four years of, of changing stuff and masks and having to, you know, go through loads of different procedures of making cruises as safe as they possibly can be has been truly amazing. And when I was on Arvia, again, you could see that the staff, you know, I, 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 I felt bad for some of the staff because it was a brand new ship and you can see that they were still learning on the job. They were still having to, you know, get used to a brand new cruise ship. But bless them, they really did go above and beyond. We had a few issues on our cruise in regards to cabins. We um, had sewage smell coming through the cabin. And that could have been a con. It's not a con on this list. But we did have sewage through sewage smell coming through our cabin. And the housekeeping team was straight on it. They were like, they were there. They, you know, they were like, we're going to change a room. We're going to put you somewhere nicer on the ship. We got to put midship. They were just brilliant, they really were, and I feel like on cruises we we do give, you know, I think sometimes we do give the crew um, a hard time on things, you know, if anything goes wrong it's you, it was the crew's fault, and I just, I want to show some appreciation to the crew because they were fantastic, and we met so many amazing crew on board, we actually had some nice social drinks with the crew on board, which was really nice, and do you know what, it's, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I miss them, I do miss some of the staff on that ship because they were, they were just brilliant, and if I was at I'm, I'm one of these people with, with cruises especially I'll go on the ship once and then that's me finished with it I may go on it again in the future but ideally it's just a one trip one thing and then I'll just move on unless it's Disney obviously Disney I'll go back and back but with cruises it's kind of like I go on the ship once and that's me that's me for that time I would go back on Arvia just to see the crew because they were so they were so nice oh now the next con is passengers <laughs> now I know this video is going to be very unpopular <laughs> I know it's going to be but I am um, you know as much as the crew are amazing I and 99.9% .9 of passengers on board the cruise ships are amazing. Unfortunately, sometimes you do get the passengers that are just giving people a hard time. And we witnessed so many times um, if where passengers were just so negative to crew. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a story of if literally uh, what we experienced. We're literally on deck eight. Again, I spent a lot of time on deck eight. I love deck eight. <laughs> I spent a lot of time, we're in the main atrium. Is it deck eight or was it deck six? Sorry, deck six, main atrium. And we're at the cocktail bar, it's like midday, and a lady comes down and she's like, uh, I, I, want, I, want a, I want a drink. No, please or thank you, I want a drink. The gentleman said, that's fine, I'm gonna do you a drink. The only thing is, you need your cruise card because she didn't have a drinks package, you need a cruise card to scan so then you can get your drinks. And she was like, oh, why do I need a cruise card? And literally was making such a drama, pulling stuff out of her bag. She was like, oh, previously I've not been asked for my cruise card. Guys, if you've sailed on a, on a cruise, you know you have to have your cruise card with you. It's, it's something you scan to, you know, if you've got a drinks package, you even need a cruise card because they scan it so it shows up on the system and she was just making a big huge song and dance and then bless the gentleman he didn't really know what to do we we're about three days into the cruise here he didn't really know what to do he didn't really know how to deal with it she then asked for his manager the manager came down she's literally shouting at the manager in the face saying how wrong he was to ask her for a cruise card I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? And I felt like I was sitting there and I felt like I needed to step in, but I thought, no, I just need to, you know, just let them crack on. But I just felt like saying to her, bless them, treat these people with respect. Like, you can't speak to people in that way. 
Anyway, it was about 15 minutes of confrontation. And then they ended up giving her a drink and they wrote her a receipt out and then she came back later with, with the cruise card. But it's just, I, I don't know, I, I just feel like sometimes, guys, you're on holiday and I get you're on holiday and not every holiday is perfect. There's going to be things that are going to annoy you. Some beds, for example, or, you know, it, it might be another passenger or it might be something else. But just show respect to the crew. That that's It's not a big ask. You know, these people, bless them, are working so hard to make our holiday is as nice as it can possibly be and you've just got to treat people with respect do you know what I mean it's not a huge ask it really isn't and I feel like I don't know sometimes I saw it a lot on this cruise and I don't know if it was the time of year we sailed in January to February I don't know if it was the time of year maybe it's maybe it's other factors I don't know I would love to know in the comments what you've experienced I think because I was spending a lot of time on my own on this cruise I was seeing a lot more things Stevie spent a lot of time sunbathing when he could get a sunbathing <laughs> spent a lot of time sunbathing and chilling so I was kind of you know in and around editing I spent a lot of time editing on this cruise that's why you had nine vlogs <laughs> it was a lot of editing and yeah I, I was just I, I, sometimes I put my headphones out and you just listen to conversations and I don't know you, you, uh, I saw it all on this cruise guys I saw it all I would love to know what you've experienced on a, a p &O cruise ship we're back with another pro I love the pros I'm not really keen on the cons <laughs> I much prefer the pros. And there was a lot of pros about this cruise. The pro was the food. Now, I said this on one of my previous videos. p &O's food, I absolutely love. What I will say, I will say this, mind. If you haven't cruised with p &O since maybe 2019 and you go on a newer cruise, the food has changed a little. Not by much, but just a little. I've noticed, like, for example, I got steak on one of the nights and it didn't come without the cheese sauce. <laughs> First world problems, guys. First world problems. But it didn't come with the cheese sauce. I was gutted. I was really gutted because I love the cheese sauce. But no, it didn't come with the cheese sauce. I had like loads of mushrooms and gravy on. But actually, it wasn't gravy. It was like watery gravy. It still tasted amazing. And the steak literally was like huge. It was really, really big. But like I say, first world problems. It's not the end of the world. That was probably the only meal that I wasn't 100% keen on. We did not have the best extreme experience with Sixth Street Diner. The diner was interesting for us, and I must be one of the only vloggers that has said I wasn't keen on, because I've watched a lot of other cruise vloggers, and they've all said, like, it's amazing, we love the Sixth Street Diner. I don't know, maybe it's because I spend a lot of time in the States. I'm, I'm used to eating American food, so maybe I went in there expecting it to be, like, American dining, and it wasn't. It was more, like, British. With an, It was more like your TGI fry is if you know what I mean it was like it was like British food in an American basket sort of thing and um, with like a few American like like icon foods like you know like your cornbread and things like that it was still nice but it just I think maybe I gave Sixth Street Diner a bit of a hard time actually thinking about it but overall food on P&O was absolutely brilliant the buffet was really really good I, I love the keys I've said this a few times in my vlogs I love the keys I think the keys is a really nice place to have food the actual uh, restaurants in general I, I thought the quality was really really good there was not there wasn't really a time during the cruise where I thought all oh, the foods went awful on P&O um, I know a lot of people will say the foods went downhill with P&O I would say it depends on what standard you're used to eating at I'm gonna be honest I'm a Nando's boy I love me Nando's I love me TGI's I love me Weatherspoons yes I'm a Weatherspoons person as well I love Weatherspoons so my quality of dining is probably not gonna be it's some people's quality of dining that's what I'm gonna to say like me and con love a takeaway <laughs> you know what i mean um our local chinese literally is probably funded by us <laughs> so this is the thing like i'm used to eating just your knobby normal food i'm not used to anything fancy or anything like that so maybe um, i don't know maybe my taste buds are more <laughs> or maybe not used to the, the quality that some others are now this is a weird con for me because I, i'm going to keep this short and brief actually for this con i have to have five pros and five cons it's the whole point of the video but I wouldn't really say this is a con, but the rooms, this is the only thing I will say about this. What I noticed with Arvia, and I don't know if it's because I've not sailed on an inside cabin before. I'm not 100% sure, but I just felt like the rooms were narrower. I don't know why, but it felt like they were more thin and long rather than wide and i know it sounds really silly and apologies if it does I'd love to know your thoughts on this if you've sailed i can't remember what iona's cabins were what were like but what i will say about iona's cabins is we were really fortunate because we had a balcony on iona and obviously your balcony cabins are a lot bigger than your insides so i can't really remember if, it, if it's because of that but i don't know what it was i just felt like 
the cabin was a lot smaller. So it's a con, it's not the end of the world. We still had enough space, we still had enough space for our cases, but I just felt like the rooms were a lot smaller. I would love to know, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments of if your if your thoughts on the rooms. Let us just have a, uh, a sip of coffee before we carry on. Who likes me Simba mug? How awesome's that? <laughs> Maybe this is the thumbnail. <laughs> I don't think that would work for a cruise video, would it? The next pro I would say next would be boarding. Now I'm going to talk about boarding in the sense of going to the cruise. I was absolutely blown away by the whole fly cruise with P&O. So what I expected, and I'm going to be honest, I was flying economy with Tui and I knew it was a chartered flight, so I was thinking, oh God, it's gonna be like the old, jaggy old planes. <laughs> I've done a chartered flight before with a cruise company, so I was expecting the plane to be from the 70s, <laughs> expecting long queues at Manchester Airport. I don't know, I just was expecting to be queuing all day, and that was just as far from the truth as it could have been. We literally arrived at Manchester Airport for about half six, the flight was at half 10. We got there four hours before, I kid you not, we literally, uh, thankfully we got on a bus and we got taken in. And as we got taken in, there was a massive P&O sign saying, you know, oh yeah, check in here. And I was like, oh wow, so we had our own check-in desk. There was like seven staff at the check-in. Bearing in mind, you know, the cruise, it was only one or two flights from Manchester. So the massive desk with loads of staff on, there was literally like, it was just walk straight into the check-in. Checked in straight away, security was really, really quick. Obviously that's not to do with P&O, that's just look of the draw with the airport being quiet. We then were literally queued to get on the plane. That was a little bit longer, the plane was literally pretty much sold out. We then sat down on the plane, food was fine. I've said this in the vlog, food was fine. Got to the airport, literally straight off the plane, no waiting about, that was another thing I was like, are we gonna be sitting waiting, chartered flight, I don't know what we, what's it gonna be like, straight off, straight on the bus, straight to the ship, and I kid you not, walk on, literally walk on on the ship. They had loads of staff, there must have been at least 15 to 20 staff, literally there, it must have been a 10 minute at most checking process to get on that ship. The longest time was getting from the airport to the actual ship, because it was about 20 minutes. That was actually maybe a longer actually, but maybe about 40 minutes, but it was just crazy quick. And then straight onto the ship, straight through security, straight on the ship, literally, it was crazy how well it was organized. And I must say, mind, I've never done a fly cruise before going. I've done a fly cruise coming back, never done a fly cruise going. So I've only ever done the return journey and I'm, I was just blown away by how well it was organized. And you may come back, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Everyone might have a different opinion. I know a few people had issues going because that plane broke down. I think the wing, the wing froze over or something. And I know there was a few people on our cruise that would completely disagree with my feedback on this. But I would love to know from you guys watching, how was your experience? Would you say P&O's organization for your fly cruise was great? Are you doing a fly cruise? Are you waiting to see what it's like? I would love to know in the comments. For me, for going, I can't, I can't complain. We had a very smooth fly cruise going to the sh going to the ship. And however, going was brilliant. Coming home was a different story. Now I'm going to try and keep this as short and brief as possible because this could, I could, this could be just a whole video on itself. But going home was a little bit of a nightmare because a disembarkation day is a stressful day. They want you out of the cabins by 8 a.m. and sometimes you won't get off the ship until four or five o'clock in the afternoon to fly home. So that is a little bit, that's a bit of a nightmare. And we had to be out of our rooms at eight, but then the systems went down. So we were allowed to stay in our rooms for a little bit longer. We had to wait around the ship for about six hours and oh, could you not just sitting around the lounges waiting to get off that ship is the worst about disembarkation. That is one of the best things about when you're Southampton because you can just get off that ship first thing go home and you don't have to sit and wait around we waited around so much on disembarkation day it was awful but anyway we you know like I say first world problems it's not the end of the world we got home uh, well we got we got we, we we got off the ship first problem was there was about seven or eight buses and they literally crammed that bus full then when we actually got to the airport check-in was absolutely fine going through the airport and that was all fine but then actually when we had to go to the airport and anyone who's watching this video will will explain this like 
if you were there obviously there was no sort of like checking procedure there literally there was just like a staff literally saying are you going to Birmingham you need to come here are you going to Manchester you come here and before you know it there was like people nearly missing their flights and everything it was you know like when you're in the airport in like Manchester or, or, or London or whatever there's like a board and on that board it'll say boarding now boarding now flight times and, and, and whatever they were there but they were all wrong they were all wrong they were all telling them to go to different places which didn't exist so people were coming down and I'm not joking people were coming down while we were boarding our flight and saying is this for Birmingham and we were like no this is for Manchester and they were like where's the Birmingham flight the staff didn't know where it was they were like uh, I don't know people were like running around like what's going on we were like what's going on where's our plane and um, yeah it was just it was carnage it was like car crash anyway we're standing in a long line obviously everyone's running around crazy not knowing where to go and then the staff are just like, okay, then everyone just go, everyone just go and get on your plane. No order at all, no order. And the problem was, is there was people who needed special assistance, but there was no special assistance there to help them. This is what was blowing my mind. I was literally like, what is going on? I literally had spoke to one of the staff and I was like, there's literally someone in a wheelchair. Luckily, a woman just literally shouted above everyone and bless her, good on her, good on her. She shouted above everyone and said, you all need to stop. There's someone in here that needs to be on this, on this, uh, bus first he's in a wheelchair so then the staff stopped and let um let the let the person on the wheelchair but i kid you not behind me there was this woman and she literally was screaming i'm in premium i need to be on before anyone else i've paid a lot of money i need to be on first before anyone else i don't do videos like this very often but you know what i'm letting it all out today <laughs> Atrocious behavior, <laughs> atrocious. Anyway, you will all be happy to know the people in special assistance got on first, but I kid you not, if it hadn't been for that woman really stepping up and bearing in mind she wasn't, this is what this is what terrifies me about this airport. She wasn't even crew or anything. She was just a normal going person who was sitting, not even far away from me, actually she was just two seats in front of me, just a normal going person who literally stood up. If it hadn't been for her, it would have been an absolute free for all. And what I don't understand is Barbados Airport is not small, it's a big airport. Airport. What is, I don't know what is going on, but I then found out after, because a lot of you guys reached out to me who was on the same flight as me, that's normal. That is normal for Barbados Airport, which I found absolutely crazy, because as you know, if you're getting on in the UK, it's usually really well organised, isn't it? You get on and, it, you know, it, you, you won't go for anything. You won't go through anything like that. But yeah, it was just it was just mad. So as much as p and organisation for going, 10 out of 10, for going home, they really, they really need to sort that out. Anyway, after all that negativity, let's have a sip. Honestly, I don't like doing videos like this. I, I really, I'm not a negative person. I know this video is very negative. I'm really not a negative person, but you know, things to be said. Anyway, pro housekeeping. Housekeeping team on the cruise. 10 out of 10, you know the amount they do on that ship, you do not see them stop. I know I've already said crew, but I just want to give the housekeeping team just a special shout out themselves because they were absolutely great. They really, really were absolutely great. I, I can't, I, I literally, I can't follow them. Every single day you would get a knock on the door. Is your room all right to be cleaned? It would be literally spotless. They would always put like little biscuits in the room or, or, or little things. We were gifted um, a bottle of champagne. It's a champagne or wine. I'm not a drinker, so it was champagne or wine. I know there's probably a big difference between champagne and wine, but we got gifted a bottle of champagne. It was just really, really nice. Honestly, it was the, the housekeeping team were really, really good. One of the things that I always do, and I know it's not everyone's thing, so don't don't think that I'm pushing this on anyone, but I always leave a, a tip. Um, I don't tip daily. I don't I don't ever tip daily. I always just tip at the end of the cruise. I'll take a little bit of pounds or dollars. For this cruise, I had pounds because we were I just took pounds. It was easier. And I just left some money and I would usually leave about 10 pounds per day so for a 14 night sailing you leave about 100 to 140 pounds like I say that's not everyone's thing it's just something that we've always done as a family we're the type of family that when we go out for a meal at a restaurant we'll tip not as much as like what you would tip in America but we'll tip so it's just been kind of brought up to me like it's growing up where you you know you would tip really good service so I always leave a tip. I would love to know if you do the same. Now, lastly, the last con. Now, I feel like a bit of a hypocrite with this con. <laughs> 
But um, for, for our cruise, the last con is all the filament that was done on our cruise. Now, this literally is, I feel like a hypocrite saying this because this is what I do. <laughs> and I know I fill in my holidays and I know it's not everyone's cup of tea because obviously, you know, there's a camera out and about and people, you know, feel uncomfortable and stuff. And that's why I always try my best to make sure I don't get other people in the camera. And I always just try and focus on myself or whoever I'm with or like the facilities that I'm trying to fill them. But on our cruise, it, because it was quite an early cruise, there was a lot of filament going on. And sometimes during the cruise, there were closing sections off of the ship to do filament. And then like randomly, you would like be sitting in the jacuzzi and then literally a drone would just come up in front of your face. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is this? Literally someone came to me when I was in the jacuzzi and were like, is that your drone? I was like, no, 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 it's not my drone. They were like, all right, it's just because it, it looked like you were controlling it. That's because I was sitting in the jacuzzi and literally a drone just appeared up above the jacuzzi because I was on deck eight where the whirlpools are and a drone just come up. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I wished it was my drone because it would have been a brilliant shot. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of filming going on on our cruise. There was a lot of influencers on our cruise who were paid by paying order to be on the ship. Honestly, I, I, I get it. I do YouTube and stuff. I'm, I'm not saying it's a negativity of people filming their trips. I'm really not. The only thing I would say for me is just it was a bit frustrating to wake up some mornings and for to be told, oh, this section of the ship's closed because we're doing filming today. So, like, for example, every night, I would love to go around the promenade and he kept closing it off for filming and it was just like oh my god and then on a the morning we would wake up this was more the first week than the second week but on the morning we would wake up and they'd be like oh we've closed this section off for filming today it's part and parcel of going on a maiden voyage or an early cruise they're going to be doing a lot of filming that is just generally what is what happens but just for us it was just a bit like oh my god i really want to experience this or i want to do this and i'll do that and we couldn't do it i would love to know any, if, if your thoughts in the comments i know Avia for a long time will have a lot of Pro promotional stuff because obviously they need to film the cruise they need to promote it and, and whatever I totally get it with my pros and cons it's all subjective to my holiday and when you go on P&O's or if you go on any trip your thoughts and pros and cons are going to be completely different to mine because some of my cons may be your pros and some of my pros may be your cons and that is and that is one of the things so when you watch this please don't allow this video to put you off on firstly oh i'm not going to get a sunbed this trip because dan said that you can't get sunbeds or i don't know dan said the food's great so oh my god we're going to have the best food because you might get on the ship and you might go oh actually this food's crap i nearly swore guys i nearly swore this is a family friendly channel but yeah you may get on the ship and you might be like well actually i disagree with what dan said the food isn't that nice and that's why the comment section here guys and if you have any thoughts pros and cons yourself i would love to hear them in the comments below because everyone's trips are going to be completely different but anyway guys i really hope this video has been helpful if it has i would really appreciate you if you smash that like button and if it hasn't been if it hasn't been good for you, then still smash that like button because I could do with the likes. <laughs> and it really helps if, if you smash that like button, it really helps other cruisers see this. And like I say, I would love to hear your pros and cons in the comments below. And if you disagree with some of my pros and cons, feel free to put them in the comments. You know, no offense taken here. Like I say, everything's subjective. Everyone has a different type of holiday depending on who you are, what you like and things like that. So I'd be interested to hear. Anyway, guys, make sure you stay tuned for more because this is the last Avia uh, content, but we are going on a cruise with the family very, very soon. So you will have another set of cruise vlogs coming very soon. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon members. Patreon members get access to early vlogs and early content and things like that. If you'd be interested in Patreon, the link is below. Sorry, I was just looking behind me to see if uh, my sign was still there. <laughs> Because I was like, oh, don't just so fly. It sounds so cringe, but... Oh, no, no, don't just fly so... What did I just say? Don't just fly. Oh, my God. I've ruined the ending. <laughs> but no, guys, I really appreciate the support. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my Avia Cruise Vlog series. Uh, if you've enjoyed my Cruise Vlog series, there's two vloggers. In fact, actually, there's, there's a lot of vloggers that I would recommend you go and watch. Um, Cruise with Amber has created a series of tips and tricks on P&O's Avia. Um, travel with tom and dom e my god i hope i've got that right tom and dom or dom and Tr oh my god just go and watch them i'll link them below <laughs> and cruise monkeys who i met on the cruise as well they were absolutely they were absolutely brilliant and um, tom and dom loves to travel that's that's the name of the, that's the name of the channel guys i'm so sorry i'm such a terrible vlogger <laughs> really, i'm such a terrible vlogger anyway thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and i will see you soon thanks guys bye enjoy whatever you're doing and if you're going on avia i hope you love it anyway see you soon bye